Hello. A surface has two sides, a front and the back, an inner side, interior side, exterior side, uh, like this one. A checkerboard on this side and a Mandelbrot, like a random sort of looking red uh, structure here on the other side. Well, it is uh, on a ground which is grey with uh, red borders here. This is a Maya rendering. Maya renders this like this. Now, when we uh, look at the viewport here, it looks totally different. And maybe it depends a little bit on the graphics card, but basically we are entering very diffuse worlds here. Uh, I introduced two lights here, parallel lights. Uh, one is uh, shining from this side and the other one from the other side. So I have good lighting for both sides. That's why this is basically well lit, but it's a Maya renderer and uh, it's uh, no shadows uh, switched on currently. So it's pretty boring, but it shows you what this tutorial is about. Um, well, a two-sided shader is not trivial at all. For example, the ground plane, for example, is... Um, gray and red and down here it's black actually when we render it it will turn out that it's uh, gray and red as well just like that one so the typical surface has uh, the same shader on both sides so how about applying a different shader on each of the two sides well um, the the Maya documentation for this current version which is was currently uh, in uh, 2018 probably 2019 will come out in a second uh, or in a <laughs> or in two um, the documentation is um, uh, pretty sobering create double-sided shaded surfaces I give you the link to this help page here in the description below but basically what it does create a material create a sampler info utility, create a condition utility, create a checker and uh, uh, create a texture. I created a Mandelbrot in this um, context here, never mind. Then assign the Fong to the material. Well, I assigned the Fong already to the material, so that's, that step has been done ready. But now in the hypershade, where's the hypershade? Connect the checkers out color attribute to the conditions color if true attribute. Then something similar to the conditions color if false attribute then connect the sampler info flipped normal attribute to the conditions first term or second term attribute connect the condition out color attribute to the font color attribute and then perform a test render this goes much easier i know but uh, i'll show you in a second but first of all we need to stick to that really impressive thing here well the hypershade that's what they talked about is found here under windows and rendering editors hypershade it has this icon here so here is the hypershade with uh, the whole setting which was introduced in that tutorial okay I'll just briefly show you what's happening here this is the mandelbrot here you see it uh, appear here in the in the uh, preview this is a checker why it doesn't appear here I don't know um, they have a placement uh, node each of them meaning well we want the Mantelbrot uh, very big or very small or repeated several times over the whole surface and the same for the checker or maybe we want to see a checker structure like a 10 by 10 or maybe we want to see a 1000 by 1000 which won't look like a checker then but uh, that's what it's about this that's that's the two textures here actually 2d textures in the, that case even so the out color here of the Mandelbrot goes into the condition node the condition node is an extra node how do you create a condition node well in the hypershade just press the tab key the tab key opens wherever you ta uh, press it, uh, this field, and then you can type in condition. And you get the option to create different conditions here. And the uh, one in the bold letters is just the, uh, the one we need. 
So this is the way you create condition, sample info, Mandelbro checker nodes, etc. It's only one way to do it. Yeah, there are other ways too, but this is an elegant way to do it really. So the Mandelbro out color, that red color here, goes into the color if false of condition one. So, well, it's an if then thing in computer programming basically. The checker goes into the color if true. So what is Maya supposed to do, or the renderer supposed to do with this info? Well, it sends the color out to the color node of the Blin object, of the final shader, so to say. But in order to do something with the if-then, um, the uh, input here, first term or second term, needs uh, an info too. And that's provided by the sampler info here. The sampler info uh, flips the normals. So basically it says, uh, when you look at the surface from one side, uh, use the Mandelbrot. We'll look at the Mandelbrot. If you look at, at it from the other side, flip the normals for rendering. Meaning, um, the other side is really something else, and uh, it's not nothing, color if true or false, it is... Uh, it is something with a flipped normal. So it's on the other side we have a, a shader and on this side we have a shader too. Complicated enough, I know, but that's the whole setting you have to do using this <laughs> manual here. Okay, uh, the short way. So let's uh, create an Arnold shader here. We forget all that. And are really depressing. So assign a new material and this time we assign an Arnold not a standard surface shader but guess what? An Arnold two-sided shader. So here is the two-sided shader now and well you have this icon here if you click it you have the option two-sided uh, front and back. Now let's render this. Uh, we need a light, a sky dome light, and we render it using Arnold. Currently the shader is black. Although Maya shows us in the viewport something grayish. Well, different worlds, different thinkings, different shadings. So um, we We'll go back here and two-sided. That's where we were earlier. So the front, well, let's go for a 2D texture and use the checker. So Arnold already renders the checker on this side. So let's go back here and check this. That's the back of our surface. And this time I think we don't go for a Mandelbrot, but for a mountain. And here is the place to the texture uh, node which I showed you earlier. Uh, you can repeat uh, the structure here, not one by one, but 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. So it gets more rough now, or more Oh, maybe less rough. I don't know. So that's uh, basically the Arnold two-sided shader, which is very elegant, very fast. And of course, the Maya renderer doesn't see anything about it. It's just, it doesn't see what what's supposed to be here. So this is Maya rendering of the two-sided shader of Arnold. And this is the Arnold rendering of the two-sided Arnold surface. So last thing, how did I make this structure easy? Make NURBS torus. The start sweep and the minor sweep. And now you see that in most cases we need only one surface but as soon as we open this thing 
we want to see something else. Well, have a good day. Until next week.